Now, we've been talking about the major topic of what is the church. When we look at the church world today, we see a lot of different churches, but what is the church of God supposed to be like? When I say church of God, I don't mean church of God, church of God in Christ. I mean the church of God in general. And when I say that, I mean the church, as in Acts chapter 2. When we look at the church, we see that all throughout history, even going back to Abraham, God was calling, looking for it, calling out people. He wanted them to be separated from the world. In the words of Jesus Christ in John chapter 17, he wanted a people that were in the world, but not of this world. And when we get down to we start studying and we start looking at it more, we start seeing that Christ gave gifts to the church. And if you look at the gifts that Christ gave to the church, what are some of them? What are some of the gifts that Christ gave to the church? He gave diversity of tongues. There should be a real big apparent one for today. Pastors, and just going down to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. And he gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And remember, when we looked at pastors and teachers, teachers, there's no comma in there like there is with everything else, or semicolon. So pastors and teachers are one. A pastor is supposed to be a teacher, but a teacher may not be a pastor. But when it comes to the calling of a pastor, a pastor is supposed to be a teacher. And then we went down to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 28. And God has set some in the church first apostles, <coughs> secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers. After that, miracles, gifts and healing, helps, governments, and diversity is of tongues. Sister Chuck, do you have a pen with you? Yeah. I have a blue paper for you. Everybody else has one. Did you want a piece of paper, Daniel? Okay, just check it. So when we look at the church, God's not like it seems most employers or at least the one I work for currently. They don't give you a position and say, hey, I want this job done. Now figure out a way to do it. And they don't give you any of the equipment or the proper tools to do it. When we look at the Word of God, God established the church. He established it upon who's the chief cornerstone? Jesus Christ. After that, who makes up the foundation? What's that? Yeah. Not the pastor. Jesus, oh, Jesus is the chief. We're looking at the foundation of the church. The, what? Yeah. Not just yet. We're getting a little ahead of ourselves. Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone, and the foundation is composed of the apostles and the prophets. And then we build upon that work. And the Bible says that the church is composed of lively stones. That is us constantly growing the church. So when we were to build this church, God didn't just say, here you go, have at it, and didn't leave us with any resources, but rather he made sure he gave us the proper tools to build the church. He gave us the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 2 and verse 4, that gave us more power within this vessel, the Holy Ghost working, but then he also gave us other tools. He didn't say, I'll just leave you where you're at, but I'm going to give you pastors, I'm going to give you teachers, I'm going to give you prophets, I'm going to give you apostles, I'm going to give you um, give the healings, I'm going to give you the diversity of tongues. So God gave us the tools that we need, and or as we've been saying, the gifts that we need to grow the church. Not just And when we look at the church, we're not just talking the church as a body, but we're talking us individually as well, because we are the church. Those around us are the church. Paul made that clear when he said, not everybody can be the hand, not everybody can be the foot, but we are all members of the same body. And thus, we are lighting the stones, constantly growing, and God made sure to that, so he gave us gifts. Now, we've just as that finished discussing the gifts that Christ has given to the church. Now, I'd like to take about five minutes on that piece of paper I gave you. I want you to write down what gifts and talents do you have in your own life? that God has given you. Don't look at me like that. I'm sure you do. So we're going to take five minutes to sit down, and we're going to think. We're not going to have a discussion, so whatever's on your paper, that's between you and God. And if somebody else's nose is not your paper, it's between you, God, and them, apparently. But we're not going to discuss it. So this is just us to sit down, 
write down and think, what are the gifts that God has given us? What for gifts do we have? What for talents do we have in our own personal life? Did you want to do this? Give you a pen with talent. Here is a pen with talent. Will the hands up pray for it? Creation. When we look 
years and years and years ago, I was asked to pray over a black light service when we were getting ready to practice. And I got laughed at it a little bit. But I pray that as God is the author of creativity, allow that creativity to flow through us or something like that. You realize, what does Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 do? Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. Did God create the earth? Yeah, God created the earth. And then when there was nothing to hang the earth on, he reached out and hung it on nothing, and that is exactly where it stayed. God is the author of creativity. In fact, the Hebrew word that is used for the name of God in Genesis chapter 1 and 2 is Elohim, which refers to him as creator. Now, man is created in God's image. How else do you think one man can look at a tree and go, I bet you I could make a church pew out of that. Uh -huh. I bet I can make a house out of that, brother Eli. Uh -huh. I can write, reach out and make something to write on like you did this morning. Uh -huh. You know, there's something that's not so pleasant that I have to do it every day and I need a wipe with. I bet you I can wipe from that tree. Glass. How can we look at something and say, you know what? I bet you I can make that into something. Or we can look at something and say, I bet you I could reshape that and make it into something more useful. How can man do such things? No, we are not God that we can make something out of nothing. But our creativity comes from God because we are made in his likeness. We, and because of that, we all have gifts. Our Heavenly Father is the creator of all things. And he has creativity. He has wisdom. He has knowledge. He has all kinds of stuff at his disposal that are part of his attributes or his characteristics. And with us being made in his image, guess what? Now I know looking at some people and hearing them talk and act, we might question it a little bit, but God has passed on gifts to us in our own personal life. Talents, traits, things that we can do. Now not everyone has the exact same talent. Not everybody can do everything, all the same stuff. Not everyone can look at the exact same image object and say, hmm, I bet you I can make something out of that. We may go do a yard sale. We could look at, let's say, a chair. And someone might say, hmm, I bet you I could paint that and make it like new. Someone else might say, hmm, I bet you I could take that and put a whole new bathroom on it. Someone else might look at it and say, I can turn that into something completely different. And you'd never even know it was a chair before. How is this possible? Because God gives different gifts to different people. Not everyone has the exact same gift. Not everyone has the exact same talent. 
You'd love it when Sister Beth gets up here, plays the piano, and leads us in worship. You'd absolutely abhor it if I got up here and lead us in song. Sort of, and not to mention try to play an instrument. But not everyone has the same talent. Not everyone has the same gift. God gave gifts to the church for us to help us grow. But God also gave gifts to us to help the church grow. It's just a matter of changing the mindset of us coming into church and getting the JSP mindset in the sense that don't come to church and ask what your church can do for you, but come to church and say, what can I do for God? What do I have at my disposal? Not everybody can run the sound booth, but there's somebody out there that can do a whole lot better than anybody else in this entire valley probably can. Not everybody can get up and get things ready for black light and get it organized. Sister God is amazing when it comes to science, getting them together, try coming up with ideas. When it comes to the stage and platform, Pap and Doug are absolutely awesome at getting the stage together, what we need, figuring out how, what we need to do it. Everybody has different gifts. Dennis back there has the gift of gab. He probably has not met a stranger in his entire life. Yeah, I have. Not everybody can do that. There are people that are afraid to go out in the world. Then they stay home and they're shut in it because they're afraid to go out. Not everybody has the exact same gift. But God has given gifts to the church to help it grow. Some may have gifts of artistry. Some may have the gifts of gab. Some people just have the gifts of faithfulness and consistency. Because the Bible says that we are living epistles right of man. Yes, we need to go forth and invite people to church, but they may not come. But from our faithfulness to church, faithfulness to God, they'll say, you know what, there's something different. Some people have the gift of giving. You know, we can't go overseas and do the mission works over there. Maybe we wouldn't survive over there. I won't lie, when we were down in Panama, I love fish. But I saw the way the fish came out of that restaurant for somebody else to eat. I wasn't ordering fish. It had the head, it had the eyeball. You know, I knew what I wasn't ordering. Some people, they can't go and live into a different country. They couldn't assimilate. They couldn't get down. They couldn't try to reach them on their level. But they can support the missionaries that can you know, that everyone has different gifts. It doesn't necessarily have to be all apparent. It may not be something that anyone ever really knows about. When it comes to the gift of giving, that's between you and God. No one needs to know that you're helping support anyway. But yet, that is a gift in itself. And that is what we're looking at today. We've looked at the gifts that God has given to the church. But what gifts has God given to us to help the church to grow? The Bible states in Psalms chapter 139 and verse 16, if someone will please read that, Psalm 139 and verse 16. And if someone else would please find Jeremiah 1 5, Jeremiah 1 5. But if someone please read Psalm 139 and verse 16. And I did see myself being unperfect in my book, all my members were written, which in continuous perfection, when as yet there was none of them. So when we're looking here, the psalmist is writing that before he was even formed in his mother's womb, God still knew what he looked like. All his members were recorded. God still knew exactly who he was before he was even formed in his mother's womb. What about Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5? Jeremiah as a prophet was placed on him in his mother's womb. 
If we look at the life of Isaiah, we find that God called Isaiah while he was also in the wilderness. We won't read this verse, but Isaiah 49 and verse 1. So God is the one who places calling upon people while they are still in their mother's womb. So before you are out of the womb, before you are the rebellious teenager, before you are maybe ignorant, stubborn, headstrong, and stupid, and stupid, God knew who you were going to be. Now God in his foreknowledge does not let himself know everything we see throughout the word of God, but God knows what his will is for your life, who he plays, who he plays for you to touch. He knows who you are before you are even born. And God already has those gifts that he wants to give you before you are even out of the world. Why? Because they are to be used for the glory of God. God placed you where you are in life for a reason. He placed you here for this season. God placed you in life where he wants you to be. And God also gave you the gifts that he wanted you to have. Because also, when we look at gifts and talents, is every talent beneficial in every single area of life? No. There are talents that we use here that may be of no use to maybe a church down south, Maybe a church over in India. But God has placed us here for this time and place with this gift and talent for our purpose. Also, we can come back to the words of the Apostle Paul. Not everyone is the hand and not everyone is the foot. Some people may have several gifts in the same church, but they're not all going to have the same gift. Why wouldn't we all have the same gift? Because if we all have the same gift, we cannot be well-rounded. We cannot reach as many people as we could be. So God places different people with different gifts. And because we are made in the image of God, these all stem from Him. And He's the one to work through these gifts for His glory. And we are meant to use them for His glory. If we harbor and hide these gifts, what good are they? If we use them for our own personal gain, is God being glorified? Yes, maybe God gave us a gift for our own personal life, but he expects us to use it in every other area of life as well. Because how many people think that just because they are a great cook that I only cook for my family at home? How many people you know with that mentality, whether saved or unsaved? But rather, if a church has a meal like today, and say we have a pot, a potluck, would they not be cooking for that service as well, for that point in time as well, using that creativity, using that gift? We use our gifts so willingly in so many other areas of life, but for some reason when it comes to church, we just don't think about it. Or we don't put as much emphasis on it, because we come in with the mentality of, what can I do for God? Or I showed up to church. But the church is not contained within these four walls. The church are lively stones. And it's constantly growing. You realize that in this valley there are saved people here. But I'm sure there are saved people in another church. And another church. You know, we'll be surprised when we get to heaven. Who made it there and who did but God has given every single individual, whether saved or unsaved, a gift and a talent. And as parents, do we not sometimes recognize that as we're growing up? Or what happens with these traits and talents? You as an individual, did you maybe recognize your, one of your gifts or talents at an early age? Whether you could draw really well, whether you could just communicate really well, whatever it is. And did you build upon that? Did you make it grow? Did you advance? Brother Doug's good with word working. But if he would have realized that he was good at an early age and just said, okay, I'm good. I'm, I know what I'm doing. That's all there is to it. Would he be where he is today with woodwork? So stop with your artistry. You can draw. I can draw. But if you would have, as a young child, I'm assuming you'd recognize it as a young child, that you could draw. Am I wrong? But if 
Did you ever try to advance and make it better throughout life? Look at different things. Hmm, I wonder if I could draw and sit down and try. But what would have happened if at an early age you would have just say, for me, I always get the image, my dad started me drawing dogs. We would sit in church and he would draw dogs. I can't draw a dog like dad, but dad can draw it really well. But if you got that simple shape and that simple form, I can draw and stuff, what would have happened? Would you progress through your talent? Would you be where you are today? Have you picked up other skills and talents or traits along the way as a result of that gift? The same thing is true with each one of us. God is the author of creativity, and we are made in his image, and he's given us gifts, whatever they are. And they can range in a multitude or a pleasure. But how are we using those gifts? Because I can almost guarantee you that each one of us has a gift somewhere. And we recognized it early on in life. And because of that gift, it's opened up other doors of opportunities for us to learn other things. This week, I was all excited because I've been practicing with photography. And I just learned how to do a multiple exposure. It was something I never learned before. But had I never learned the basics of photography, not that I know of, I would have never been able to progress to the next level. Or there's going to be other things I want to do in the future with photography. And as things open up, I'll be asking people, that, hey, can I do this? And they'll say, yeah. And I'll say, how can you do that? What is that? That is me at the base of my gift that God has given me. And slowly you get better and better and better. We've all done that throughout life, whether it's giving, whether it's no flirt, and when it comes to living, giving is a hard area to begin with. Because everyone's begging for money. But for the person who's a giver, they might have trained their eye to look for the person, you know what? I can tell that they're struggling in their life and that they need help. Here's five dollars. Versus the person who goes, I need five bucks. Okay, here you go. Three days later. I need five bucks. Okay. I need five bucks. And it just continues. Those are the people that really need money. They, those are the people that need to learn how to budget their money and everything else. Yeah. But there are people out there that really know, that really need help. And those are normally the ones that are too priced. So maybe the person who has the gift of giving has trained their eye to look for a different, you know, uh, I can tell that they're strong. We are advancing our talents for the glory of God. And we've advanced them throughout our life. But it's a matter of recognizing that, hey, this isn't just for my own personal life, but I need to apply it to church as well. What can I do for God? Yes, we need to come to church. We need to come with an expectation that God's going to move. But we also need to be aware and like that it's not just a matter of us getting to heaven, but man, God's instructed us in his word to reach out to the lost and drag them with us as much as possible. Go out and tell the lost. Tell them that they need to save you. Tell them that they're dying to go to hell. Because if we don't, their blood is on our hands. What are we doing to use our gifts and our talents to reach out? How are we using them to help the church? And on a side note, are we paying any attention to our young people to help train them in their talents? To recognize the talents that our young people have to push them farther? Because... As Christians, you know, just as individuals, I think we should have the mindset that it's not a matter of, well, I'm better than them, but it's a matter that we should push them and that they should be greater than us. They should be better than us. And that is true when it comes to the church. We need to be recognizing and looking for our young people. What talents do they have, have that we can help and guide them in? Are we paying attention to others? Are we looking for talents such as creativity, book sparks, work, woodworking, construction, writing, computer graphics? We are living in a day and age of social media. What can they use if they have the knowledge? How can we help them to advance that knowledge that they may one day use that for the kingdom of God? That the church may grow. See who's look, beginning to show signs of leadership skills, even at an early age. Does that person look like that they might be a leader in their life? What can I do to help them be a better leader? Because there are a lot of horrible leaders in this world. There really are. Especially in the workforce. There are a lot of bosses, but there aren't really any leaders. What can I do to help them grow? Because especially in leadership skills, it's not just a matter of a leader or a church, but that's got to be something that they use in every area 
area of life. And the same thing is true when it comes to really any of our accounts, if we get down to it. We don't use it just in church, but we also shouldn't just use it in our everyday life. We should expand it and let it grow. Say, what can I do for the glory and the kingdom of God? Coming back, uh, interest in technology, phones, sound systems, etc. Not that we make it a, a concert, but that they can learn the technology, that they can have it at their fingertips. Because one thing we know in the Arab age, everything is constantly changing, especially in technology. It's changing rapidly. How are we helping people? Are we looking for these talents? And then finally, we'll wrap up really quickly with Titus 2, 1 through 7, we won't read it. But here we find instruction that the older women are supposed to train the younger women. And they should guide them in spiritual truths and help them to grow. Well, the same thing is true in every area of our life. Are we helping one another grow? Are we helping our young people to grow? Because really, what happens with a church that is full of old people? What's going to happen over time? If there's no fresh blood, it's going to die. It is going to die. So they need younger blood in them. If they get younger people in that church, and the young people just sit there, and they don't get anything, what's more likely going to happen? Church is going to close up. Eventually they're probably going to go off, and the church is still going to close up. Why is the church going to close up? Besides the fact that they didn't get a real personal experience with Jesus Christ and God personally. Right. Apparently. Because no one gave them instruction. No one gave them wisdom. No one gave them knowledge. When we are advancing in our gifts, in our life, what is one thing we needed to progress that gift? We needed instruction. We needed wisdom and we needed knowledge. Wisdom being, knowledge being the know how to do something, but wisdom is knowing how to apply it. Because you can know how to do something, but you don't know how to apply it to make it effective or really bring it to fruition. We need to be looking for gifts and talents in our young people and trying to help them grow, trying to help them progress. Because if we do not instruct them, then it just dies off. And if they are wanting to progress in that, and we know how to do it, should we not help them to progress? I mean, that is on us to help them grow. Because the other thing, too, is if all we do is come and sit in a pew, guess what mindset we're training for the next generation? And the next generation. That all we do is we come to church every Sunday, we sit in our pew, we pay our tithe, and we go home. We're not even training them to come and expect God to move. But even if we do, we come, we expect God to move, and we go home. They do not have the mentality of, ask not what my church can do for me, but what can I do for my church? Or better yet, what can I do for God? Because it's not just these four walls, but it's a matter of building the kingdom of God. We need to be instilling within them the mindset that all their talents should be used for the kingdom of God. And if someone would read this in closing, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. 1 Corinthians 10, 31.
Well, we, Jesus talked about someone coming to a house and needing rest. Somebody coming hungry and they gave him food. They were naked and they gave him clothes. And the man asked, well, Lord, when did you come to my house? He said, I visited you three times. I was naked and you clothed me. I was hungry and you fed me. I was weary and I needed rest. What was that? That wasn't a man sitting in a church. That was a man going about his everyday life outside of these four walls. We need to instill within ourselves that church is an everyday life. Everywhere we're at. Because it's not about church. It's about God. Everything we do should be to the glory of God. When we come to church, we should come with an anticipation that God should move. But also, we should come with an anticipation expectation and anticipation. God, what do you want me to do during this church service? Do you, is there somebody here that you want me to lay hands on that they're maybe not feeling well or they're sick? Do you want me to lay hands on them and pray for them? Do you want me to lay hands on them? Maybe they're going through a difficult time. Maybe it's somebody who's already received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. God, do you, let me be using the gifts of the Spirit during this service. Lord, if you want to move, Lord, use me. And in our everyday life, that should also be out of prayer. As the song states, Lord, if you can use anything, use me. Because it's about the kingdom of God, making it grow. Because the church is not contained within these four walls. The church is every single person alive. If this church should burn down to the ground and there's nothing left, this church is a God. Because we are the church. As a matter of us, Recognizing our gifts and our talents. And then, even if we don't, be praying, Lord, reveal to me how I may be used for your glory. And that we get it. That we realize that God's given gifts to the church. Apostles and prophets, teachers, preachers. God's also given gifts to the church in other forms. And that's in the form of our talents and our abilities. And it's a matter of us changing our mindset in the words of JFK to some degree. Ask not what your church can do for you, but ask what you can do for your church. Any thoughts, any questions, anything that anybody wants to add at this point in time? If not, we'll close her up and we'll get ready for service. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you all praise and glory for everything you've done for us today and shall continue to do, Lord. Now, Lord, we rebuke every attack of the enemy that should come our way. We pray that you set your angel at the four corners of the property, above and below, that no attack of the enemy would penetrate. I pray that our hearts and our minds would be in one mindset and one accord, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth. That the Holy Ghost may move, making himself visible as you so choose, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would just be with us here today. Let everything be, that is said and done be glorified to you, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would just have your way in the service here today, Lord, and that you would just move in our midst like never before, that you would reveal our talents and our gifts to us, Lord, and even with that, help us to pro progress in them, Lord, to go farther and deeper in them, not because of who we are, that we may become self-reliant, Lord, but rather, Lord, that we may change our mindset and, Lord, get more into the thought pattern that is not what can you do for me, but, Lord, what can we do for you? You've done so much for us, and we know that you are with us every step of the way, and that you are a friend that's taken closer than a brother, and that you're there, someone we can count on at all times, Lord. But, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would help us to be the lively stones that we were meant to be, Lord, to help the church grow, that you would be magnified and glorified. And even if we not see, don't see it here, Lord, we know that there's coming a day that all shall be revealed. That all things that we do and say, Lord, throughout our everyday lives, that it would not be for the glorification of us, Lord, but it would be for your glorification, for your glory.